Hello everyone, welcome to our studio today. Glad you joined us. We're working on a very special project. This is something that probably we've never done on the show that, that I can recall since we started. It's very different and I'll explain some of it to you. And let me go over here. Jim, I want to go down to the brushes and I've got actually a whole set of brushes here. And I want to explain a couple of things to you. First of all, let me pick up this little brush right here. This one you very seldom ever use in fine art. This is a sign brush. It's called a quill. It's got, usually they have squirrel and ox hairs in them, and they're very smooth and it's very flexible. And if you notice, it's about an inch long, so it's a real long brush. The reason it's long that way, a couple of things. One, you can drop it down, spread it out, and get a wider stroke with it. Also, it carries more color, and that's a great advantage. Now, I want to show you another one. Matter of fact, I'll pick up two of them. These are called flats. They're also usually with the same kind of hair in them that the uh, quill. Uh, and this one is real long. This particular brush now, now I've, told, I've told you a lot of times, we used to be in the sign business and these are leftover brushes from that era. And uh, this particular brush probably would be around, I'd say 35 to $40 now. This is probably somewhere close to 60. And it's got long hairs and it's a great brush for, actually you can do one stroke lettering with it and with this one also. Now I want to show you one other brush here. That's a funny shaped little brush as you can see. This is a pinstripe brush. This is for doing pinstripe on automobiles and motorcycles and helmets and stuff. And I'm not sure what these cost now, but they're pretty expensive now. And we have another little brush here, which is called a liner brush. It's got soft tires in it. I'm not sure what this one would cost now because I, I bought these some time back. Anyhow, we're going to start out with this brush. And I hope that we can get a little bit done today on this. And uh, first of all, I'm going to wrench it out into thinner. Come over to the board and I'll show you what we're working on. Now, I've already painted the, the red in this one and, and started the silver little dots in it. Now, the color that I'm using is different from what we use when we do fine art, although you can use that paint just as well, and we probably will use some of it. But this is what they call sign paint. This red is sign paint. This silver is. And we're going to go into the silver right now. I rinse my brush out. Now in sign painting, you have a lot of repeat. In other words, you'll... Uh, do something like, for instance, if you letter a truck or a car or anything, you usually will letter one side, go to the other side, and letter the same thing. Some people may think that's boring, but it's it's not really. I enjoy doing it, and this putting these little things on here are a lot of fun. And I found the best way to do them is to outline them with this little brush. Come over to the board, and I'll show you how we do that. Now I've left this unpainted so I can lay my mall stick down. Now if you see, I'm just outlining it. Then I'm going to fill it in. Now I'm going to do a whole bunch of these, so don't leave me.
And I've already got my color mixed up to a good consistency. Now, if you can see, you can outline letters with this brush also. And that's really important, especially if you're doing a gold leaf job on a window or on a board or something. Now we're going to do all of these little silver things. If you notice, I'm pulling a line all the way around it. Now, I'm a pretty, uh, pretty fast at doing uh, sign work and stuff because that, that's what I've done for a number of years. I've also done fine artwork and pictorial work. There's not many folks uh, left that does uh, hand-painted signs anymore. And I miss seeing that because the uh, some of the stuff we see on trucks and stuff around is is really uh, sort of boring in a way because it, it doesn't have the pizzazz. With a hand lettering job, you can outline, shadow, And I think in most cases it makes a real interesting or beautiful job. All right. Now, as you can see, we just about got one one little window done. By the way, I painted the uh, yellow early on, so I would uh, have have it completely dry. And this is a mixture of paint thinner. and a boiled linseed oil. I'm going to slide over here just a little bit. I may have to slide back and forth a little bit. I'm going to pull a couple of these, or at least a few of them. Now, you can take a, a bigger brush to fill in with if you want to, but I don't have to do that. Now, one thing I want you to sort of notice, I'm using just the tip of the brush. In other words, I'm not trying to lay it down a whole lot. And if I needed to, I can go back and outline those in black. I'm going to pick up a little of my mixed media. And I'm going to go back and pull some more of these. Uh, now, 
sometimes it's a little hard to talk when you're doing real tedious work. But I love to talk to people while I'm working. Uh, Jim and I used to travel out a lot and go to different stores and set up and uh, paint. And we would encourage people to drop by and talk to us. It doesn't bother me at all. I enjoy that. Now, one thing I would like for you to notice, I'm, I'm re-dipping that. It's a mall stick, the way I'm holding it. In other words, this is called a mall stick, and what it's for is exactly what I'm using it for, is to keep you off of wet paint. Now, let me show you something here. I'm going to drop, drop it right here just a second. I actually can lay my hand here and do this. You see? <laughs> you see, in other words, I've left all of this open so I could do that. I'm going to lay this back down and go ahead and do a couple more with, with just my hand. But I am using this the same as the mall stick. Now, I'm keeping my brush under control as best as I can. I think now when we left you the last time, we were working on the back side of the ship, and it's a little different than this. I'm going to go ahead and fill these in. Now the reason I decided to paint these silver, these things really sparkle. They really shine up good and it makes a, your eye go right into the side of the ship. I'm going to rinse that out a little bit. Now I've got to uh, move this, the ship a little bit, so I'll be right back. 